The MCU has had a little bit of an issue when it comes to their villains in the past. In my opinion, it is getting better, but either than a handful, majority are forgettable. I just finished recasting villains from the Fantastic Four movies, but now it's time to think ahead. Instead of recasting, it's just casting. It's those new villains we've never seen on screen before, majority of them coming from the Fantastic Four, and of course there are a ton of them, so I'm kind of limiting myself to just a few. Specifically, the big ones fans have been waiting for are the ones that have been kind of teased for future films. Before I get started though, I have to thank today's sponsor, Frome. Now, Frome is an awesome company that condenses a film to a beautiful piece of art. They take the colors from each frame within a film and make this. It's beautiful, abstract, and I love that I can put it really anywhere in my home. I feel weird about only putting up movie posters all over my house, so hanging this in my living room makes me feel like an adult, with an awesome little Easter egg attached. They sent me the Avengers Endgame from, and I love that I can still pick out certain scenes, like when Thor killed Thanos. It's high quality, well built, while still being beautiful. Check out the description below to get 10% off of From of your choosing, or use Brian Seeker, one word, at checkout. As for the casting, as I've said before, this is a previously established universe, meaning all actors who have appeared in the films before are obviously off the table, as well as the actors that I cast within my X-Men and Fantastic Four recasting videos. Like I said, I've already recasted those big names from the Fantastic Four movies, so if you're looking to see Doctor Doom or Galactus or Silver Surfer, check out my last video. Today, instead, we're talking about Neymar, Super Skrull, Nihilus, MODOK, and Kang. So let's cast the future villains of the MCU. First up, we have Neymar. Now, he's one of the few very famous characters that we have yet to see in the MCU. Now, there has been some debate online, what is the ethnicity of Neymar? But Neymar is actually coming from a race which is fictional, which are pretty much humanoids that can breathe underwater. They are stronger and more durable as well, but still, it's a fictional race. But the debate online is whether he's white or Asian. And while I think you can go either way, and I don't think it would really matter, I think it would be interesting to build a culture in a world with Atlantis that is different than the normal one we see above water, similar to Black Panther. I went with an Asian actor for that reason, so we can build that world. As for the actor I want to play him, I do really want someone young. I feel like Neymar could stick around for quite a while in the Marvel Universe, since he has some interesting character turns and evolves in the comics a lot. Also with casting a younger actor, it could also play into that egotistical side of Neymar that I really want to see on screen as well. He's usually overconfident and impulsive, which could change with his character arc, but he should definitely start off that way. Now I have noticed as of late that Marvel's really relied on A-list actors, but for me sometimes that makes it harder to see the character and you just kind of see the actor. That's why I went with someone who's up and coming, and coming into his own. That man is Henry Golding. He has done big budget movies, but he's yet to make himself known for one particular role. He is best known for super rich Asians, but it's in The Gentleman that I saw his talent and why he'd make a great Neymar. He's 6'1", jacked, and has impressed me in everything I've seen him in. He plays someone who's egotistical in The Gentleman. I think if you warped that slightly and brought him in a different scenario, made him a little less whiny, it would represent the Neymar I want to see on screen. You are out of touch. You're forgetting the laws of the jungle looking down on me. Now when the silverback's got more silver than back, you best move on before he gets moved on. So Henry Golding has Neymar. Next up, we have Super Skrull. Now, he's never been one of my favorite characters, and I think we're unlikely to see him in the MCU, but still, he's a massive villain for the Fantastic Four. Now, the Skrulls obviously appeared in Captain Marvel, which I kind of felt were the best part of that film. Ben Mendelsohn's performance was incredible, and I love how they just kind of kept his accent and kept him as himself rather than changing him to make him an alien character. Although it's not a necessity for Super Skrull to share that same accent, I think it'd be interesting and fitting if Super Skrull was Australian as well. Now, Super Skrull obviously needs to be menacing and believe he's the most powerful being in all the world. He's super faithful to the Skrull Empire even when they forget about him, and he has the powers of all the Fantastic Four. I went with Eric Bana for this role. Strange choice, I know, but he used to be one of my favorite actors. He has his charming side, which we kind of associate with him, but it's roles like Star Trek, where we can see him in a more villainous turn. I do not speak for the Empire. We stand apart, as does your Vulcan crew member, isn't that right, Spock? But I'm looking at Chopper, one of his first roles where he's so unhinged and raw. I want to see this Eric Bana come back and show us a villain like this. Terrific snake eye, Jim. Bloody terrific. You obviously listened and learned well, didn't you? Always give credit where credit is due, Jimmy. I'll give you top marks for treachery, mate. Blue, you're bloody useless. I 
think he still has a role like Chopper in him, and it'd be great to see him explore that fun, crazier side to Super Skrull. He also has the look and the chin for the character in my opinion, and he has experience in action, and he's a veteran actor who could bring a lot to this role. So Eric Bana as Super Skrull. Next up we have Kang, which is a character I'll be honest I'm less familiar with. Therefore I'm actually going to have another YouTuber help me out. A channel going by the name of Superframe actually shouted me out for my X-Men casting videos a while back and I've been watching his recasting as well as his comic book analysis, specifically the Kang video. But if I'm being honest, he knows a ton more about this character than I do. We end up actually having the exact same actor in mind for the role, but he does do a better job explaining the character than I do. So Superframe, take it over. So, Kang the Conqueror. Kang is an interesting character to cast. Whilst he may be a time-traveling conqueror from the future, he isn't all what he appears to be. Sure, he may be short-tempered, straightforward, and pressed for time, but that's all reasonably justified. Kang isn't just trying to conquer moments in time, although he has done that. He's also trying to save the future. Save the future that has trapped his wife in suspended animation. The show is Captain America's decisions, which leads to this time being erased, and thus sparking his quest to destroy the Avengers. This. Captain America's presence in your time has caused. In the MCU, we could do a similar thing. After Scarlet Witch messes up the multiverse in the Multiverse of Madness, we could see a Kang come to fix this situation by having to eliminate Wanda. We see a man pressed for time, a man that has a sense of urgency in the rhythm of his voice, and alternatively, someone who, when spoken calmly, gives off an incredibly scary vibe. Now, a younger Richard E. Grant would have been great, but that's why the only choice is Javier Bardem. Javier has the range for this role. He's not shy to romance movies, being able to sell his motivation. In Skyfall, he showed the presence, a man in control, a man willing to go to the ends of the earth to get what he wants. In No Country for Old Men, we saw that intense aura, a sense of urgency. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here, and now it's here. He comes across as a man that doesn't enjoy what he's doing, but it has to be done, similar to Kang. Of course, Javier isn't shy to big budget movies, and his star power can hold up to scrutiny against the new Avengers. So, Javier Bardem for Kang the Conqueror. Thank you, Superframe, and check out his channel in the description below and give him a sub. Next up we have MODOK. Now MODOK is a strange one, and honestly, if he's in the MCU, they have to go fully comic book accurate. He needs to be as weird as he is in the comics. I mean, when your name is an acronym for mental organism designed only for killing, it's hard to normalize you in a film. Obviously, he would not be a physical threat, rather an intellectual one. Now MODOK does have his chair, which has weapons in it, but I prefer him to go a more mastermind way. He really sacrificed his body to have the largest brain in the world, so it just seemed natural for him to take on that role. Now I think MODOK needs to be all these things, but kind of irritating as well. He kind of needs that pins and needles voice while being a know-it-all. The perfect combination of human intellect and machine. Now the perfect choice for MODOK is actually about to voice him already. I think he would be a great voice, but also a great motion capture performance as well. That man is Patton Oswalt. Now before you comment, I know Patton Oswalt already briefly appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I've never considered the shows to be truly a part of the MCU. Some may differ, but that's been my opinion. Plus he'll be heavily altered with CGI, so it could still really work. Either way, Patton has an iconic voice that has that irritating nature, but he has the passion in the Demeter for this role. That's exactly the answer I wanted, Mr. McQuaid. I want you to question what I'm saying. This is the basis of this whole course, and that's the beauty of college. You can say whatever you want. So Patton Oswald as Modoc. Last up, we have Nihilus. A tough one to cast because we haven't seen anything like him on screen before. He's been the ruler of the negative zone, which would be interesting to explore in the MCU. Now, Annihilus is an Arthrosian, which is a race that is more insect-like and bug-like. He also does wear that suit of armor, which is more of an ectoskeleton with some armor components, but Annihilus does look like green Ultron if I'm being honest. So he may need a redesign for the MCU and really leaning into that insect-like look, which definitely means that the CGI route is needed. I think Annihilus needs to be slimy, he needs that voice that's bug-like, while still having the intelligence needed for the character. I feel like having an actor with voice acting experience would be very interesting for this role, rather just having an actor's natural voice. That's why I went with Alan Tudyk. He did a great job with K2SO, which he did all of the acting on set for as well. And if you want to see him do something a little bit more distant and menacing, you have to look no further than iRobot. I did not murder him. But emotions don't seem like a very useful simulation for a robot. I did not murder him. 
hell, I don't want my toaster or my vacuum cleaner appearing emotional. I did not murder him! Sometimes I feel like he gets labeled as a weird voices guy or for more comedic roles. But he's a legit actor. I loved him in A Knight's Tale and Firefly. I feel like he'd be more than willing to get dirty on his hands and knees to really bring Annihilus to life. He'd bring that slimy nature with his voice as well as the physical performance as well. So Alan Tudyk as Annihilus. So there are the future MCU villains. Let me know your choices in the comments below. As always, thank you to my patrons Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Edwards, Gay Marshana, Colleen West, Marco Perry, Roland, Amy McShane, Shalon Hudson, Kieran Hunt, George Conan, Brandon Warner, Alex Tao, Derek B. Bell, Jacob Wolf, Alexander Gardulo, Rachel Kilker, James Rogers, Archie Steffen, and Gregor Davidson. Thank you for your support, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.